गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एट दी आउटसाइड माई थैंक्स टू डॉक्टर रुतुल फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी टू बी अ फैकल्टी इन दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड माई कॉन्ग्रेट्स टू द टीम पी एस जी फॉर द एक्सलेंट शो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट थायरॉयड डिजीज एंड जी डी एम सो वी हैव बिन डिस्कसिंग अबाउट जी डी एम सिंस येस्टरडे एंड आई विल ट्राई टू फाइंड द लिंक बिटवीन थायरॉयड डिसऑर्डर्स एंड जी डी एम whether they are interrelated or whether it's uh, uh, coexistence because of its uh, increased prevalence of uh, both the conditions so that's going to be my focus of discussion in next 15 minutes so there are certain physiological changes which uh, occurs in the body of a pregnant woman uh, during pregnancy so profound hormonal modifications occur involving both glucose hemostasis and thyroid function adaptation so physiology it uh, affects uh, the uh, sugar pathway as well as the thyroid pathway and most of the time the woman can successfully overcome this metabolic challenges and uh, the pregnancy remains uneventful with regards to this physiological changes but at times uh, the body is not able to cope up with this uh, demands and uh, there is a manifestation of uh, gdm or uh, gestational thyroid problem so several compensatory mechanisms are required to meet gestation include neo equilibrium and uh, as i said pregnancy is a challenging event which implies that even slight preconception reduction in the functional reserve that is insulin resistance or reduced thyroid reserve may lead to impaired adaptive responses and subsequent pathological states so these two conditions are the most prevalent endocrinopathology uh, of the pregnancy taking into account uh, diversified screening approach uh, given the different risk according to ethnicity and bmi the gdm prevalence ranges between 1 to 28% and prevalence of thyroid dysfunction also varies from population to population going from 0 to 13% for overt hypothyroidism and around 1.2 to 43% for subclinical hypothyroidism so as you can see subclinical hypothyroidism is very common this we all know we read in newspapers also today the two conditions may indeed share some risk factors for their development maternal and fetal repercussions as well as long term consequences so there is a interrelationship between gdm and uh, uh, gestational uh, thyroid diseases and uh, that may affect uh, the maternal and fetal outcomes so again the first part of gestation is a anabolic state Uh, which establishes the maternal body to prepare for energy demands of later pregnancy and this is characterized by normal or slightly higher insulin sensitivity to promote glucose uptake by liver muscle and subsequent reduced fasting glycemia so as uh, it is being discussed if a well controlled diabetic uh, lady experiences uh, hypoglycemic attacks then one of the possibility can be pregnancy early pregnancy and after this uh, this uh, human placental lactogen human placental growth hormone prolactin and cortisol takes over and it increases the insulin resistance in the maternal body and uh, the insulin resistance progressively increases by 30 to 50% in late pregnancy so i am going to skip these slides uh, pertaining to gdm because uh, enough has been discussed i will focus on gestational thyroid disease and uh, pregnancy has profound impact on both thyroid gland morphology that is structure as well as function and uh, first pre pregnancy thyroid hormone steady equilibrium is markedly modified because of high circulating levels of this hormone human chorionic gonadotropin it has thyrotropin like action so because of surge in the hcg there is increase in the levels of circulating t3 t4 levels and there is a mirroring of suppression of tsh during the first trimester when the hcg is surging so hcg surge lasts for around 20 weeks after pregnancy so in first 20 weeks if you are seeing a low tsh i am not talking of suppressed tsh but low tsh it is a physiological response it is not pathological moreover an increase in iodine uh, iodotyronine deiodination activity by the placenta and in the serum concentration of t4 binding globulin occurs so because of increase in thyroxine binding globulin you will see a high level of t3 t4 in pregnant woman so that is again normal 
because it is due to a high level of a thyroxine binding globulin. Only if free T3 and free T4 are abnormal, you should consider it as a pathological. And an increase in the thyroid volume due to stimulation by HCG is observed throughout the gestation. And the degree of thyroid volume increase is directly proportional to degree of iodine deficiency. More the iodine deficiency, more the hypertrophy of thyroid gland. But this increase in thyroid volume is usually reversible at the end of pregnancy. But it can lead to permanent goiter in areas with iodine deficiency. And meantime, the production of thyroid hormone increases by nearly 50%, which is parallel by a 50% increase in the daily iodine requirement. So, maternal iodine intake should be monitored closely when uh, a female is pregnant. These physiological changes are not challenging in thyroid disease uh, free women, but different degrees of thyroid dysfunction may occur even in you thyroid woman with pre-pregnancy subtle thyroid abnormality. So this is how the physiology and pathology works in pregnancy. So this is non-pregnant state and this is uh, the classic hypothalamo pituitary thyroid axis and negative feedback from thyroid to pituitary. And in normal pregnancy, non-eventful pregnancy, uh, placenta, it uh, intervenes this uh, hypothalamo pituitary axis, but it doesn't dis disturb this axis. So there is a I will say a, a, a tall plaza here and if tall plaza is uh, functioning normally, there is no abnormality in uh, the hypothalamo pituitary axis. But if this uh, placenta malfunctions, because as I said, placenta works as an endocrine organ during the pregnancy. If there is increase in the deiodinous activity, then it can disturb this uh, hypothalamo pituitary axis and it can lead to gestational hypothyroidism. So again, common pathophysiology of GTM and GDM. Uh, there are several studies which show that uh, non-pregnant patients with type 2 diabetes uh, have higher prevalence of thyroid dysfunction and uh, subtle changes in thyroid hormone levels, even within normal range, are not free of metabolic repercussions. So in people with subclinical or overt hypothyroidism, muscle and adipose tissue become insulin resistant and uh, so in pregnant women with subtle thyroid dysfunction due to increase in insulin resistance, there can be increase in the prevalence of GDM. And uh, a state of insulin resistance also during gestation is a phenomenon that can contribute to pathogenesis of GDM in the second part of pregnancy when the placental hormone starts surging. And uh, another interesting hypothesis regarding possible link between GDM and gestational thyroid disease stems from pivotal role of placenta as fetal endocrine organ. And uh, this I already discussed, these are anti-insulin hormones, HCG, HPL and human placental growth hormone. And uh, uh, more, uh, more of placenta is main barrier between maternal and fetal environments, regulates the amounts of nutrients reaching the fetus, including the iodine transfer. So, these are the GDM uh, and G, uh, uh, modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. The most recent ATA that is American Thyroid Association guidelines uh, suggest that women older than 30 years should be specifically targeted for thyroid dysfunction screening during pregnancy. So, diagnostic criteria of uh, GDM, I am not uh, uh, going in details. But according to most recent ATA guidelines on thyroid disease in pregnancy, in absence of in-house established reference range for TSH, a reduction in upper reference range by 0.5 should be used to diagnose subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnant patient during the first trimester with gradual return to pre-pregnancy reference range during the second and third trimester. So initially, we used to follow this cutoffs that in first trimester 2.5, and second and third trimester three. But the recent guidelines have uh, said that you should uh, minus only 0 0.5 from the upper limit of uh, reference range in the third trimester, uh, in first trimester and in second and third trimester, you should go by the normal reference range for, and this has led to a significant decrease in prevalence of subclinical hypothyroidism. So in other words, we were over diagnosing subclinical hypothyroidism uh, by the older criteria. So GDM I am skipping and screening strategies for gestational thyroid disease. TSH should be tested in case of history of hypo, hyperthyroidism or signs symptoms of thyroid dysfunction. Known 
thyroid autoimmune positivity or presence of goiter history of neck or uh, head irradiation age more than 30 years concomitant autoimmune disease history of uh, pregnancy loss preterm delivery or infertility multiple prior pregnancies family history of autoimmune thyroid disease or thyroid dysfunction morbid obesity and use of certain drugs like amiodarone and lithium which are known to interfere with the thyroid function so is subclinical hypothyroidism associated to an increased risk of gdm yes if only patient is having a subclinical hypothyroidism with TSH of more than 4 with positive autoantibodies, there is a relationship between subclinical hypothyroidism and GDM. Can subtle alteration in circulating free T4 increase the risk of GDM even when TSH is normal? So I will cut short this slide. I will just say that yes, if the free T3, free T4 ratio are high, with even with normal TSH, there is an increased risk of GDM. Is thyroid autoantibody uh, antibody positivity a risk factor for GDM? The literature suggests that an association between thyroid autoantibodies positivity and GDM can be observed only when thyroid dysfunction is present. So again, the main criteria is TSH should be more than four, and only then the autoantibodies matter. Now, do the GDM and GTD impact on the same pregnancy related outcomes? Yes, the first two are the common. So, both GDM and GTD can have preeclampsia risk, preterm delivery risk, and these are the risk specific to gestational thyroid disease, small for gestational age, pregnancy loss, and lower offspring IQ. So, what are the postpartum implications of GDM? I am skipping this slide because enough has been discussed about this. And uh, again, I am skipping GDM slide, but uh, maternal uh, GDM, uh, again, these are the GDM slides. Now, I will focus on postpartum implications of GTD. For mother, almost 40% of patients with subclinical hypothyroidism during pregnancy showed a persistent hypothyroidism after delivery during a median follow-up of 11 months with uh, antithyroid antibody positivity during pregnancy and persistency at six weeks after delivery as significant risk factors for long-term hypothyroidism. So even after six weeks, if uh, antibodies are positive and uh, patient is having persistent subclinical hypothyroidism, there is an increased risk of uh, progression to overt hypothyroidism. Moreover, almost one third of women with normal thyroid function six week postpartum were found to have hypothyroidism during subsequent follow-up. So even if uh, they revert back to normal after six weeks, there are high chances, one third chances they will have overt thyroid dysfunction. In another study where women were followed up for 20 years, overt hypothyroidism and TPO antibody positive during pregnancy increased risk of subsequent thyroid disease by 17 fold and 5 fold respectively. For offsprings, the effect of maternal subclinical hypothyroidism on fetal neurocognitive development indicated a slight but significant reduction in IQ among children as well as delay in motor skill development, language development and attention at 4 to 9 years of age in children born to untreated women with subclinical hypothyroidism compared to youth thyroid control. And that is the reason we should screen and aggressively treat subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnant ladies to avoid this complication. Now association between GTD and GDM I have already discussed so I am not uh, uh, repeating it and to conclude my talk, GDM and GTD are most common endocrinopathies found in pregnant women and several studies suggest that these two conditions often co-occur. This association may be explained by increased insulin resistance due to action of thyroid hormones on mothers. Another possible explanation resides on the alteration in the placentation process which are typical of both GDM and GTD. Furthermore, the association between GDM and GTD could be substantiated by several shade risk factors. So, based on the evidence of possible epidemiological link between the two conditions, it could be suggested that a diagnosis of GTD could lead to screen GDM and vice versa. So, if a person is having GDM, screen for GTD. If GTD is there, screen for GDM. So, thank you for your patient listening.